The purpose of this video is to explain the notational device that is this for the definite integral. It is actually a special type of limit. It is an infinite sum of products, each of which are infinitely small. Um, the method of definite integration is what's important, not the execution. We're not actually going to evaluate these. We're just going to see what kind of sums they actually are. Um, the method can be applied to many different things, the easiest of which is finding area. So that's what we are going to do now. Let's say that um, for the easiest problems, you are charged with finding the area underneath the curve, between a curve and the x-axis. Uh, it's kind of difficult because it's a wavy line, it's not made out of circles or straight lines, so we need another way to set this thing up. So the way that the method goes is, we're going to partition the x-axis, form a, a partition, and in doing so, that forms a partition of our region. Right? It cuts our region into all these pieces here, and we're going to label them. All right, so this will be, we'll call that delta x1 and the second one will be delta x2. And let's say uh, that we partition this thing into n different pieces. So the last one will be delta xn, it's an unspecified number. And a general one will be delta xk, and that's what we're going to concentrate. They all go the same way. Now, in partitioning the x-axis, I said it partitions our region, which it does. We have, we have these slippers here. Now, if our mesh size is fine enough, if our delta x's are small, then these, re then these regions are approximately rectangular. So what we're going to do is, what the final um, outcome is going to be, we're going to uh, approximate the area underneath our curve by using rectangular strips whose areas approximate the area underneath the uh, curve. The question is, how do you determine the uh, dimensions of these rectangles? Well, let's take a typical strip. Uh, the width of each strip is delta xk. And the height of each strip, well, how we're going to do that, you have to pick an x value inside here. It doesn't matter wh wh where it is. I'll call it xk star. Uh, x because it's an x value, k because it's in the kth subinterval, and star because it's arbitrarily chosen. It doesn't matter where we pick our xk star. We're only after an approximation. But that's the number that we're going to use to determine the height of the kth rectangle. So f of xk star gives me this dimension here. So that means that for such a piece under the curve, it can be its area can be approximated, approximated by this rectangle here. Now, this is true for each one of those subintervals, right? There's an x1 star, there's an x2 star, there's an x3 star, and so on and, and so on. We use each of those to form these rectangles. So let's come over here, and what, what we're going to do is just add up the areas. The area of the first rectangle is going to be f of x1 star, x1 star times delta x1. It's no more difficult than base times height. And the, the same for uh, the second rectangle. The area of the second right, rectangle will be f of x2 star times delta x2. And so on and so on and so on. And you have f of x n star delta xn. Now, notice there's nothing, there's nothing in this that, that um, is very specific to the function or the interval a, b, or any of that stuff. It's, a, it's an extreme generality. Think of it in terms of that. If we wanted to, we could actually get specific numbers for what delta x1 and 2 and, and 3 were, but that's a lot of tedium. This is heavy on the uh, theory, so we're just going to assume that we have actual numbers for all these, and we're going to add them up, and the sum of all these will be the uh, uh, approximation. The sum of the areas of the rectangles, I don't want to write it out, I'll use sigma notation, it'll be the sum of a sub k, from k equals 1 to n, this is the approximate area, which equals maybe uh, the sum of right, f of x k star, delta x k, from k equals 1 to n. You know, this is just the approximation, right? There's an, there's an error inherent in adding these up because it's not the exact area. However, uh, if you look at it, the more rectangles that we use, 
the more completely we fill this space in here. Okay, if we use a lot of uh, many many rectangles. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have this thing set up. This is assuming that we used n rectangles. What we're going to say is the limit as delta x max goes to zero. That means for however many rectangles we have this thing cut into, all right, when the width of the largest one approaches zero, that implies that we're using an infinite number of rectangles, all of which will fill this space entirely, and that will be the actual area is defined to be this type of limit. And also this type of limit is what this means. The formula for the definite interval. When you see this, you should think it is a limit. All right? It's this special kind of sum. It's an infinite sum of products. So that's what it means. As an example here, what does this mean then? Well, it's a sum that looks like this, okay? You could interpret this as the limit as uh, delta x max goes to zero of sum of k equals one to n of x k star plus one delta x k. Really it means, in this simple context, it's the area underneath the x plus one curve. Okay, y equals x plus one. From x equals minus one, to 2. So it's going to give you, and this is minus 1, and this is 2, so it's going to give you the area of this region. So it just makes a triangle, right? If you plug in 2, you, you'll get out 3, so there's 2 comma 3. It's just a triangle whose base and height are, are both 3, so it's going to be 1 half base times height, uh, 9 halves. That's it. Now, if we didn't have any um, geometry for this, if we had anything that curved, we'd kind of be out of luck here we would need another method to eval evaluate this. But I'm doing simple examples here. Um, how to actually evaluate these is another issue all together. Second example here. Here's a sine curve. If I tell you, and it is true, that the area beneath one hump of the sine curve is two, then what should this be? Well, if you were to set this type of limit up, uh, varying x from zero to pi, the answer that you would get would indeed be two, right? The area under the curve, that's the application above this. Uh, if you took s s s this kind of a sum, then the, the limit, what you would get is two, the sums would approach two. But then I always ask this question here. What happens if you do this sum from zero to two pi? Some people say the answer is four, some say the answer is zero. And it is indeed zero, okay? Because look at it, go back to what the definition says. You're multiplying bases times heights for everything in here. So we have positive heights here, but the heights here get counted as negative. The definite interval makes no distinction on whether these values are positive or n negative. So this area is still two. This area is two as well, but if you do it in the integral, that kind of sum, this will get counted as a negative quantity, and you will get zero. That is what distinguishes the definite integral from finding area. Finding area is merely an application of definite integration going through this method. 